This is my custom inventory robot. It's basically made up of a six axis robotic arm riding on an AGV. It uses custom 3D printed boxes and brackets I designed as well as a custom GUI in Python and can be used to bring stuff to you or return stuff to their destination. It grabs the object you want and then it drives it to the destination it needs to go, returns it, and then drives itself back home. The AGV and the robot come from a company called Elephant Robotics, and today I'm going to show you how I built this whole project. I originally got this robotic arm back in November and did a Christmas video with it. Then I got this AGV and I did a pretty cool self-driving car video just recently. And then... Elephant Robotics was like, hey, you know the robot can mount to the AGV, right? And when I started trying to brainstorm a project to do with this six-axis arm mounted on an AGV, my head immediately went to some sort of automated inventory racking shelving system. Because that's actually a fairly common application you might see either a six-axis robot or an AGV used for in industry. And so combining that in a home hobbyist type setting would be really interesting and a really cool way for everyone to see a practical use of this technology in a fairly attainable setting. But getting all of the various pieces involved in creating that sort of project is a little bit complicated. So let's break it down. First, we need to take the AGV and physically mount the six-axis robot on top of it. Then we have to design a way for the robot and the AGV to communicate back and forth somehow. Then we have to design some sort of inventory system where as the AGV is driving back and forth, it can detect where it is relative to inventory positions, which I plan on doing with a physically mounted photo eye proximity sensor. Then we need to build the handshake that when the AGV reaches its destination position, it tells the robot to pick up the thing, the robot needs to pick the thing up, and then tell the AGV that it's completed. Then the AGV will proceed to go to its home position, and again tell the robot that it's made it home and it's time for the robot to deposit the object back in its home position. Then the robot will drop the object off and tell the AGV it's done and the, and the whole cycle can repeat. So to start, mounting the robot to the AGV couldn't have been much easier because the AGV was literally designed for it. Then because both the AGV and the MyCoba are running Raspberry Pis, I figured I would use hardware digital inputs and outputs for the two systems to communicate to each other. And we'll get more into how in just a little bit. Then for the AGV to know where it is in space, I just needed to 3D print this bracket for my proximity sensor to mount to the side of the body. And now I need to come up with a system where when that proximity sensor is made, it tells us something useful. So I started by mounting some shelf brackets to a few pieces of wood that would give me the opportunity to build shelves on top, but not break the prox sensor until we design some sort of custom component that hangs below only in positions where we have an inventory component. So I popped open SolidWorks and I designed a fairly rudimentary component that basically had teeth for gripping onto the body of the shelf and then a thin beam that would stick down below the shelf to make sure it broke the proximity sensor and then just a flat top platform where we could place the boxes. And they 3D printed up really nice, including the fact that I ran out of black filament and switched to white filament halfway through the print. And they fit great and they look great and I totally nailed this first try and didn't print a bunch of crap that I didn't use. But what's pretty sweet is you can see right away that when my AGV is rolling along, it can see that it's passing these inventory locations with the prox sensor. So next up is designing a system that my robot gripper can grab easily and place onto these platforms. And once again, being an absolutely cracked mechanical engineer, I designed a box that would fit nicely in the gripper and have a little volume for holding things. And these boxes fit really nicely inside the robot's gripper hand, and they sit well on the platform with a little margin of error. So next up is getting the robots talking to each other, and while this is actually an exciting process, it involves a lot of code, which is one of the things that translates less effectively to a YouTube video like this. But I'm gonna try to keep it pretty interesting, and just before we get to that, I wanna take a minute to thank the sponsor of today's video, Elephant Robotics. In addition to this super cool six axis robot, the MyCobot, and the AGV MyAGV, Elephant Robotics offers a ton of fun educational tools and resources for learning about electronics and robotics. They have great technical support if you run into any issues with their products and make numerous products that work together super well, just like this MyCobot and MyAGV. 
These products have been a ton of fun to play around with, so be sure to check them out at the links in the description below this video. So thank you very much, Telephant Robotics. Now let's get back to the video. Right, now let's take a look at the code driving these Raspberry Pi systems. Now, as I previously mentioned, I'm going to try to make all the communications between the systems with four hardwired signals. And so I remote desktop into the AGV with my laptop and into the robot with my desktop. Let me know if you have questions or I go too fast. Now, starting from the perspective of the robot, we define a function for teaching it to grab something and pick it up and another function for teaching it to play something and release it. Then the main looping function is just listening to a digital input from the AGV saying it's time to pick something up, sending an output when it completes it, then listening for the AGV's second input saying it's time to put something back down and telling the AGV again again when it's done. The AGV code is quite a bit longer, but that's sort of just because we're building the GUI on the AGV instead of on the robot. We again just need to teach the AGV sub functions for traveling forward, traveling backwards, indexing based on the photo eye, and then some functions for the buttons on the GUI. And then the AGV's main functional loop is just a sequencer that tracks if it's in position, sends a digital output to the robot to pick something up, listens for the digital in back when it's done, and then travels back home and does the same thing in reverse. The code running on the AGV and the robot actually look pretty similar, but then there's a lot of tkinter or kinter GUI elements at the end of the AGV. Again, I'll leave the code that's running on the AGV and on the 6-axis robot below, so if you want to, check the GitHub link out there. And I've never claimed to be a graphical designer, but the GUI gets the job done. It lets you determine if you're going to pick something up or return it to its position and say which position and start the sequence. And since I have the additional touch screen mounted on my AGV, that means I can control everything from right here with a few easy clicks. So then I loaded up my boxes with some cool blue electronic components, some blue LEDs, some resistors, a relay, and a servo. And now all the sub elements of this project should be ready for us to just run some tests. So I go ahead and put it in retrieval mode where it should know to go and grab. Then I tell it to grab from position three and send it on its way. Position three is where I have the blue LEDs, and I have the AGV moving pretty slow initially. The speed is just a parameter I can improve later, but it needs to go not too fast so that it can make sure the proc sensor sees every bar on the inventory system. So once it gets to position three, the robot grabs the box and starts heading back home. And the AGV is storing its position in a variable that increments every time it passes one of the stations. Once it gets home, it drops the box off and goes back to home position ready for a new command. Next, I run a test where the robot grabs the box that has the resistance in it and delivers it back to position one. It's the same functionality just in reverse where it starts with a pick and finishes with a place but still drives back to home so it's ready for its first command once again. This is super fun to see in action and even though these components are pretty small and don't quite have the repeatability of an industrial six axis system or AGV, it's pretty darn fun to see it running in a garage setting. All right, so that is gonna do it for today's video. Thank you so much to Elephant Robotics for providing the hardware and sponsoring the video. Thank you for watching it. I hope you found it enjoyable. Let me know in the comments what you wanna see more of on the channel or if you had any questions about what you saw here today. Please don't forget to leave a like on the video and subscribe to Lamaster Tech. It helps me out a ton. We're gonna be diving into some pretty cool controls and automation projects next. So make sure you're subscribed to catch those when they come out. As always, good luck with your projects and we'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.